Welcome back to our truck camper renovation series. Today's build, I don't know if anybody else noticed, but isn't this space between the box and the camper kind of funny looking? I think we need to do something with that. We received a new order of steel and aluminum and a few four by eight sheets of 18 gauge, which is 0 0.040 inch aluminum sheets, pre-finished white on one side. So let's build some. So I'm starting my design and build um, as usual with projects. I kind of have it in my head, probably 75% and um, not the steel, the thoughts. And I'm going to start building it and then kind of morph it into what it's going to be in the end. I've built one panel out of this three quarter inch square steel tubing. Um, I decided on steel, it's just a little faster than aluminum, I'm a little pressed for time. Uh, the weight difference isn't huge by the time, I, I want to keep my opening as big as possible also. So I would have to use bigger, thicker aluminum to create the same strength as I would with steel. And I'm, this is going to be an opening door here. So I want to have a fairly large as high opening as I can get and if I go to thicker gate or thicker uh, diameter I'm going to lose opening size and it's already pretty small so it's not a super practical storage area but it's something and uh, it kind of fills that space the front is going to be even with the front wall of the camper and the back is going to angle even with the back wall of the camper just kind of make that area look filled in so Let's get building a bunch of steel boxes. So I have most of my metal cut. I'm going to use the first piece I mocked up as a template. I'm going to lay all my other pieces on top of that so they're all the same. Uh, the front panels will have their uprights in one spot, the rear panels in another spot, so I won't be able to copy that exactly to the back ones. I can get the outside perimeter all made up so they're all the same. Then I can connect everything together. Okay, I'm using the uh, one I made as a template as I said I was going to do. I have a couple pieces in there, crossers and some clamps just to hold it all together. Everything's lined up pretty good. And uh, I'll do a couple tacks. One issue with making up the plan as you go, sort of. Um, sometimes you make mistakes, I make my share. Yeah, as far as duplicating the boxes front and back to make four of them and then weld them together, I realized part way through that that's not what I need to do because the rear section, like the inside section, the camper actually bumps out 10 inches, so five inches on each side at the back. So. Um, I had to do a little mod here, my inner, this is the outside edge, this is the inside edge, and this matching back section needs to actually move in 5 inches on the box. So I'll need to uh, weld that in there, and not a big deal, I'm just moving it in, so just a little bit more welding, and a couple cuts to fix my mistake. I'm starting to put my crossers in to build the actual box. So these crossers are 14 and a half inches long, giving me about a 16 inch, 14 and a half? Yeah, 16 inch piece depth. So my boxes are just about 11, almost 11 inches tall and 16 inches deep outside dimensions. So a little bit, an inch and a half less, I think 8.75 uh, as far as the door opening high. And then inside depth of the box, um, well, I guess we'll get full depth other than these crossers. So about 16 inches, 15, 16 inches deep. So I'm clamping it all together and making sure I'm really square. I'm going around with all the squares here, there, trying to make sure it's nice and a nice square box. And 
then I'm just tacking it here and there before I get too carried away with welding. So on we go. So I uh, want an inch of space between the tie down brackets and the front of the box. So I have room for my hook to go in there. And then I left about an inch of space between the camper and the box to give me a little bit of room when we're loading and unloading because these are going to stay on the truck or these can stay on the truck. So right now, the next step now is to figure out where my holes need to be drilled to bolt it down to the brackets, make sure my placement's good, and then I can get my measurements to box in my back section, complete that, and then we'll have one box ready to be skinned. So to try and uh, mark where the bolts will go into the nuts, which are welded under the brackets, they are 3 8 nuts welded under the brackets, so a 5 16 bolt will just fit up through there. I think I'm going to... I sprayed some white spray paint in here. I'm going to dip the end of it in white spray paint and then push it in there and see if I can get a white dot everywhere I need to uh, drill a hole for the mounting bolts. It worked! I got marks. I don't like the way these ones are, they're to the edge, but I didn't weld that one in permanently, so I'm just going to move it over a little bit so I can get the bolt holes centered. That one's good and centered, this one's not. So I'm going to have to uh, get a little fancy with that one because that's too much work to move that one. So I had a hard time deciding where to mount these boxes. I wanted to provide enough clearance for the camper when it's coming in and out or shifting around a little bit which I don't think it'll really shift around much but there is about an inch movement it can go side to side depending on how it was loaded I don't think it'll move once it's on the road but there is it's not super tight so there is a bit of movement um, the tie downs are really close to the box but I want to get as much size as I can in the box I realize now with the inch that I've given the way the these uh, fast guns go in, you actually need to go in past the edge to hook them in, which doesn't work. Um, I never thought of that before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a quick link there so they can hook into the quick link. So that should eliminate that problem. That's a pretty simple solution. They should clear the box. On the back, because they angle in so much, my box interferes and I would end up with almost no box if I tried to clear that to hit there. And you can see it's right against and I'm still not in enough to hook onto the thing. So um, what I'm going to do is add a tubing inside of this tubing to bring out my base a bit and that'll be just similar to a regular camper tie down where those slide in and out when you need them and then we'll come more straight down a little less angle in and that'll uh, cure should cure our problem what i'll do is when the box is done when the box is done i will uh, put the spacer or put the extra tube in there and come out as far as I need to and then I will lock that in with a pin when I have it where I need it to be. So as far as placement of the boxes I can't really measure from the truck camper because it's not perfectly centered in the box right now even and it does have a bit of leeway as to where it could be. I can't really measure from the box because the boxes on all these newer trucks are tapered even though the truck isn't that new but Definitely it has a taper to it, so you can't really get a straight line by measuring to the box. So what I'm doing is I went with a straight edge off of my bed support, the edges of my bed support. So then at least my boxes will be placed in a good spot in relation to the bed support, which is important, or the most important dimension because that's what the camper's sitting in. Um, I did decide to taper the back of the boxes a little bit. I modified this one already. 
I took an inch out of the back in width, the front straight, the back angles in an inch for that last two feet or so. So that gives me a little bit of taper. There is a tiny bit of taper, I think, to the camper. And then that'll give me a little bit more leeway when I'm loading, when these boxes are installed, so I don't jam that box into the, uh, into the camper somewhere. Just gives me that extra clearance at the back when I'm uh, loading it up. So we have our first sheet of 0 0.040 inch aluminum, which is 18 gauge aluminum. This stuff's actually white on both sides, so we get one chance to screw up, I guess, or something. Disclaimer, I've never built anything out of three quarter inch square tubing before, and I've never bonded aluminum to it before. So this is uh, a new experiment. We'll see how it goes. So we're gonna put our frame on top. And we'll cut the bottom piece first. Best chance for mistakes being hidden, maybe. So we'll trace out our piece, cut it with the aluminum blade on the skill saw and repeat for all the sides. So the gap that the glue is supposed to set at is two millimeters. That's the spec. And I was watching a YouTube video from Oscar Overlander. And he suggested using toothpicks as your two millimeter gap, which is a pretty wicked idea. And you just break them off after the glue hardens. <laughs> Top and bottom panels are on both boxes. And we used two tubes. Sika 25, Sika Flex 252. It's supposed to be the stuff. I have three, so I don't have enough. But I ordered four more, so I should have plenty. So this, um, what's it called? Sika Flex 252. I've never used it before. From what I understand, it depends on the thickness, but it looks like around 24 hours to cure. I'm just pulling off some that came out here, and it's uh, it seems all dry from the stuff that squished out anyway. And we glued this one probably at close to 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon, and it's about 9 a.m., so we're what 16 17 hours not a full day not a full 24 hours like and it's yeah it's pretty dry maybe it's not a hundred percent cured in the middle but um it's i'd say it's pretty usable like it's not 
structural by any means, but definitely hold the panels on. So I'm going to trim up around the edges and then we can get some more panels put on. And as far as the toothpicks we used for spacers, just a matter of uh, snapping them off and maybe we'll just reuse those little ends on our next panel. Boxes are getting close. So we have all the panels on. Just working on front panels now on both boxes. We have the end panels on and the little strip on the bottom. And then the door is going to set in there. I'm going to do the door last. I need to uh, have a couple supports put in there for it to sit on. And then we'll put that last panel on. But we use the door panel. We set it in place and drew lines to make our spacing. So hopefully once the door's glued on, it'll be nice and even with the edges of these panels. So just that one to do now and then we'll get working on the doors next. So we just put our door panel in place, set it there lined it up with the bottom edge and drew a line along the edge of the door panel. We did that on both sides. Then we're going to stick down our end pieces on the front on the just on the other side of the line so we should end up with about a thickness of the marker as a nice straight gap between those panels that are glued on and our door that opens and closes. So we're not saying that's how to do it or whether it's going to work or not, but that's what we're doing. You got to watch the goo. <laughs> and if anybody's ever going to do this, buy, I said it before, I think, buy a battery powered gun or some sort of a power gun because this is hard to do. Toothpicks, not just for toothpicking. So to make this a little bit easier to squeeze, I've been preheating at 150 degrees Fahrenheit for maybe 20-30 minutes and that seems to make them a lot easier to squeeze. So this is the door panel. I put uh, one inch, or sorry, I put one eighth inch steel, one eighth, one sixteenth I think, one sixteenth, one sixteenth inch, I put one sixteenth inch steel little pieces in each corner just to hold the door kind of centered in the opening so it doesn't end up off one direction. And the panel is gonna overlap the top metal and the side metals. So that'll be its closing surface. And we just have glue on the door frame. So we're gonna try and get this in centered. We're gonna put a toothpick space about between all the panels. We're using a Gorilla 100% white silicone to fill all these gaps. I think probably a marine adhesive sealant would be stronger, but this stuff seemed to have good uh, UV resistance and dried really fast, so that's what we were looking for. Two latches. Bonus. All the bolts are going in. It's 
So here we have our somewhat finished side boxes, which was kind of a learning experiment for us since we've never built a bonded panel box like this before, but it turned out pretty good. Not completely finished yet. It's, uh, we're running out of time. We've got to hit the road and we got to pick our battles. But uh, kind of like me, function over beauty, even though it doesn't look too bad. We still would like to put aluminum trim around the edges and we still need door hinges which we're going to have to get while we're on the road and i'm still going to put uh, seals on the door probably some stick on seals of some sort but they work for now i just have tabs on the bottom to hold the bottom in and our latches are there the doors don't hinge though of course they just come off right now and I also added plywood on the bottom, which we haven't painted or anything, but they just sit down in between the sections of three quarter inch steel tubing just to protect the bottom when things are in there. I would like to have some protection on the sides also, but um, I just don't have time to, whether I'm gonna cut thin wood or maybe could just spray it with bed liner just to give it, it is, they are really robust panels, it seems. It seems like a strong grade of aluminum. I don't know what grade it is, but, um, it does seem pretty hard to dent, but I'm sure it would show dings from the inside if you put, you know, heavy stuff in there, tools or jacks or whatever. So that would be good to protect that. But other than that, we're, uh, we're functioning enough to hit the road. So that's it for the storage boxes. So we're out here on the edge of the Badlands today. Uh, finally not a driving day. We're taking it easy for a bit. And uh, I'm getting the hinges installed on my boxes. So I got one drilled there. I'm going to put one more on each side. We'll have three hinges on each box. So these uh, bolts stick in a little bit. Even if I was to cut them off with a grinder, the nuts still stick in a little bit and I have my plywood boards there. So I uh, drilled into the board so I could see where it located. I don't have all my tools with me, of course, so I have a chainsaw. <laughs> Give me the clearance I need. Here we go. Not super pretty, but does the trick. Hinges are in place, and I added some foam seals along the top and in the gap on the bottom here. This one's good. I think we're a little too thick up there. You can see it's pulling us out. I don't know if that's going to relax a bit, but um, I got the handles really tight and it's, uh, it's a pretty dense foam. I got it at the hardware store. It's sponge, not foam. So they had foam, sponge, and rubber. I went with sponge. I thought rubber might be too dense to compress, but I don't know. I don't know if it's going to give it in a little bit. Um, hopefully, if not, I'll have to get something a little softer. I think down here, though, it's good because it really clamps down on it. So, uh, yeah, we'll leave that closed for a bit. It's going to be 37 or something today. So, like, I don't know what that is. Over 100 degrees, probably. So, we're in the sun right now. I'll close that up. Let it sit in the heat for a while, and uh, that's her. When we get home, we'll trim on trim the edges to make it look pretty, but that's the functional box right now with hinges and latches, and uh, we're good to go.